If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, the chances are the worst of the winter and early spring weather is behind you. And you might be looking at planning a, a bit of a short break sometime in the next few months, either a long weekend away or perhaps a family vacation. Trips that you may have once considered taking by air or rail may no longer be feasible, either because of worries about the logistics, cost and carbon footprint of air travel or depending on where in the world you live, either the expense or the unreliability of rail travel. And that means that you're likely going to be considering driving, if your getaway destination is reachable by car, that is. And if you're one of the many, many people who statistics tell us purchased a new electric vehicle in the last year, be it a brand new or new to you one, you might be looking at road tripping your EV for the very first time. We've made plenty of videos before on the channel about route planning, and we've done our fair share of road trip videos too. So have many other YouTube channels, sometimes focusing on speed, sometimes focusing on the overall journey experience. But what's the best way to road trip in your EV? What's the lowest stress? How long should you drive between stops? What should you do when it comes to charging? And how long should you go before stopping to charge up? Hopefully, I'm going to try and explain everything. The first hopefully obvious thing to note about road trip planning and EV charging is that everyone's experiences are different. How often you'll need to charge your EV depends on a whole lot of different factors, from how you drive to how full your vehicle is, what its battery pack state of health is, the type and the state of tyres, the weather, the terrain, and sometimes even the time of day you're making your trip. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going into those variables on this video because we've done it a bunch of times in the past, but the too long didn't read is that in order to get the very best possible efficiency from your EV, you'll want it to be well maintained with properly inflated tyres and a healthy battery pack. For absolute maximum range, just like an absolute best fuel economy for an internal combustion engine vehicle, you'll want to be driving in temperate weather on a well-maintained dry road with minimal elevation changes at a constant speed of around 50 to 55 miles per hour with minimal headwind. Go faster, have less favourable roads, climb massive mountains, or face lots of stop and go traffic, and your efficiency and thus your EV range will suffer. Today though, instead, I'm hoping that you're all familiar with all of that, and now I want to focus on the charging strategy of road tripping an EV. Should you fast charge to 80% every time? Should you add a buffer? Which road tripping software or route planner should you listen to? And what are the impacts of trying to hyper maximize road trip charging? To answer all of this, there are some questions you should ask yourself about your comfort level, your skill level, and the purpose of your trip. As with everything in life, the more skilled you are at something, the easier it is to adjust things on the fly, making adjustments as required, and playing the high risk for high reward game. Take the recent road trip across the south of the US from Florida to California as undertaken by Kyle and the team from Out of Spec Studios, along with some guest participants, and you'll know that it's now possible to take an EV trip over massive distances in pretty expeditious fashion if A, you know the vehicle you're travelling in really well, and B, you're willing to take risks. In the case of the Out of Spec road trip and spoiler coming in not so long, every team pushed their EV pickup to some pretty low states of charge, often with less than 15 miles, 24 kilometres of range when they stopped to charge. Most of the teams also only charged as much as they absolutely needed to in order to get to their next charging stop, and in the case of the Cybertruck team, of which Kyle was part, they regularly drove down to between zero and three miles of indicated range before hitting a supercharger. Over the course of their multi-thousand, multi-day, 
not quite a cannonball run. They saved some significant time by following this strategy. And also doing some slightly dodgy stuff too. But they were also playing metaphorical Russian roulette with every charge location in order to maximise their charging efficiency. But as the finale of the series showed, when the Ford F-150 Lightning unceremoniously lost power five miles from its nearest charging station, despite previously stating it had 13 miles of range left, when you push an EV that hard, especially a vehicle which had previously suddenly run out of charge and which may or may not have a battery pack issue, you can land yourself into a butt ton of hurt. Don't worry though, I'm going to come back to charging efficiency in a second, but I want to take some time to point out that my mentioning these videos isn't a criticism of Kyle or his channel. Out of spec, does some great stuff, and the ending of that epic trip showed that while yes, for those willing to push to the limits, it's now possible to drive from the US East to West Coast in about 40 hours in an electric pickup truck. It's also worth noting, as Kyle has done in the past, that most people don't and won't drive that hard that quickly. Kind of the reason for this video. If the out of specs race is a risky, if possible way to road trip and your reward might be less time on the road if everything works perfectly, what's a more measured approach to road tripping? What is the best way to road trip an EV? Well, obviously best is subjective. And for some people, best is as fast as possible. But what about the rest of us? Those of us who want to arrive having enjoyed the trip without depriving ourselves of decent sleep. Those who want to arrive with a car that's not screaming if its battery pack isn't plugged in immediately. To answer, let's start by talking about your familiarity with the vehicle you want to drive and the route you're planning on taking. If you're planning on road tripping your own car, a car you know really well and have driven to a fairly low state of charge multiple times, then you're going to be able to get closer to being empty when you charge than someone would be making a first time trip in a brand new EV. Similarly, if you know the road really well and you know every major hill, every rest stop and probably can guess which sites will have charging queues and which locations have the best food, then again, go right ahead. Fly as close to that metaphorical sun as possible without burning your wings. Familiarity, frankly, breeds confidence. It can help you figure out where to go next, if and when things go wrong, and it can help you make informed decisions about when to skip a charger and when to stop early. I have driven thousands of miles long distance in road trips in both a Chevrolet Bolt EV and a Ford F-150 Lightning in North America. And I've got pretty good at knowing when and where to stop, how to fix any potential issues and what the battery pack prefers for each vehicle for peak charging awesomeness. I've road tripped an early Tesla Model S from Oslo to London in the middle of winter. And I've driven a Tesla Model 3 to San Diego and back in the autumn. I've even driven Nissan Leafs cross country, so I'd like to think I have experience in all the major different charging standards used in North America and Europe. I know, for example, that Chevrolet Bolt EVs won't give you much in the way of powerful DC fast charging beyond about 60% full. I know the F-150 Lightning will give you a little extra boost of charging oomph if the battery state of charge is super low. But I also know that it can happily get to 80% pretty quickly on a DC fast charger without any major dropping in charge speed. If you don't have that level of familiarity yet, it's always best to be a wee bit conservative, at least on paper. It's what any good engineer would do, at least according to Montgomery Scott. A good engineer is always a wee bit conservative, at least on paper. Just bypass the secondary cutoff valve and boost the flow. Even if you don't have any familiarity though, some of the information that you'll need to have a success or rather than a stressful trip can be found online. Look for the various charge tests that have been done. Good ones here are Tom Malogny's from State of Charge and 
Kyle's team from out of spec. They both do great range tests and charging tests to carefully examine how new EVs behave when nearing empty and how quickly they'll recharge back to full from that point. A general consensus in the experienced EV owning world is that if you know for absolutely sure that you'll be able to charge, getting the battery pack towards the lower end of full before the fast charging starts is beneficial to both charging speed and also maximising range between stops. Pulling in at 10% full is what I personally tend to aim for though because most of the time the world isn't perfect and things happen. If you're a CCS EV owner, it's not uncommon to arrive to find a broken charging site. If you're a Tesla owner, it's not uncommon to find a sizable queue for a popular supercharger. And if getting to your destination is more important than how quickly you get there, having a small buffer can be the difference between making it somewhere else and being stuck waiting for a charger. Or indeed, um, a tow truck. Sure, that might mean you need to charge one more time on that long trip, but the stress alone is dramatically reduced. And as this recent video from Out of Spec demonstrated, if your EV's battery pack is out of spec in some kind of way, no pun intended, you are more likely to hit problems when it's close to empty, as that's when the weakest battery cells in the pack will suddenly see their voltages take a drop off a cliff and cause the vehicle to start panicking, which is what I think happened in the case of the F-150. Next, let's talk about charging needs versus your particular needs. You are, I'm going to assume, an ugly bag of mostly water, unless you are here on a super covert mission to observe our planet before initiating a first contact situation, that is. In which case, hello, but also I am so, so sorry. Believe me, we are not all like that guy. I promise. Unfortunately, these ugly bags of mostly water need regular leaking and topping off, which means you will need to stop for a while every few hours. And while it's certainly possible to go for hours and hours between stops, especially if you pack a bunch of snacks and drinks into a cooler, and I'm sure many of you are adept at the bottle trick your parents made you learn back in grade three, it's also well known that we humans are at our best if we take a break every few hours. And that probably means you need a break before your EV does. When planning a road trip, that's something you should definitely bear in mind. Where can I stop to take on sustenance? And where can I relieve myself? And which places have the facilities I need to accomplish those basic tasks while also recharging my EV? If you have a car that's capable of fast charging at speeds above about 150 kilowatts, you'll likely gain a significant amount of range, maybe another hour or two of driving, just from the 20 minutes or so that it'll take to visit the restroom, order a coffee and get a snack for the road. If you are traveling with children, elderly relatives or animals, it's likely your stop will be even longer. And even if you stop for a much shorter period of time, you'll likely get a decent top up in that time that you're doing those bodily things. And when you combine charging stops with other things, you're also less likely to get angsty and worried about range or indeed get frustrated about the need to get back on the road. I know some people are going to not like this, but Plenty of studies have shown that driving for more than two or three hours non-stop makes you less safe on the road. It reduces your ability to react quickly and it can impact other road users. There is a reason why big rig drivers in most countries around the world are only allowed to drive a certain number of hours in a day and also that they must break during the day for a given number of minutes for every hour or so they spend behind the wheel. It's also worth noting though that only stopping when your car is absolutely empty might be the best ploy for the fastest trip, but it might not be compatible with your particular individual needs. 
maybe you don't mind a slower charging session if you're stopping somewhere that feels safer or more welcoming or has a rest stop you like. Or maybe you want to stop somewhere before that state line or border because doing so is less stressful. Basically, charge when you need to, stop when you need to and drive your trip your way. I know this will make a bunch of people angry in the comments, but you know, screw it. It needs to be said. Who you are may affect your ability to charge in a way that will be optimal for the vehicle if you're traveling through areas or regions where it might be less safe for you to stop and charge. Some people watching this may never have felt threatened or worried about stopping in a random small town to charge. And they are the lucky majority. But for women traveling alone, people who are black or indigenous or for people of color, or indeed visible members of the LGBTQIA plus community, picking the next place to stop is more than figuring out the nearest charging station to your car's optimum low state of charge. Planning your charging and your trip is about finding the next charging station where you will also be safe to charge. And for people who make use of mobility aids, it's also about finding the next charging station where there's not only a fast charger, but a fast charger with a layout that's compatible with their mobility requirements. And if you are in any of those groups I just mentioned, you'll likely have experienced good and bad charging stops based in all of this. But if you are not in that group and you are traveling with someone who is, please also bear that in mind. I've heard some truly horrendous horror stories about stopping in the wrong place to charge when you are in a minority group. And by the way, if you do find a place that is safe and wonderful and welcoming, make sure you share it with the community. It is so reassuring to know when you are traveling through a place known for being a little hostile, that there's a safe place to stop, charge and recuperate. There's a, there's a reason why TE hasn't done a road trip like the one that Kyle just did. And it's not just because we live a long way from the places they went through, if you get my drift. Obviously, when road tripping, the optimum distance you want to be able to drive in a day and to be comfortable driving in a day will be different from person to person. For my personal money, somewhere around 650 miles a day is just about enough for me. That's just over 1,000 kilometers. Sure, it's possible to cover more distance in a single day, especially if you're pushing for a one day road trip between your starting point and your destination. But travel any further than that for more than one or two days will lead you into dangerous territory, especially if there's only one or two drivers. Given that you're likely saving a butt ton of money from driving electric as your daily car, it might also be worth considering putting some of those savings into a savings account, especially for when you road trip. Find a place you can stop for the night with either EV charging or RV hookups and give yourself a good night's sleep in a decent hotel. Sure, while there are some independent hotels with good charging, the sad reality right now is that the cheapest option is usually to find a chain near a major road. Those chains tend to be dog friendly and they're usually the ones with small suites that come with a mini kitchen. They also tend to have a place to charge. While for many years, charging provision was definitely hit and miss, it is getting better pretty quickly and most Big chain hotels now have at least some of their headline locations with a variety of different charging connectors commensurate with the country you're in. In a bit of a throwback to my previous aside though, I should also note that larger chains tend to be more welcoming to minorities because head office doesn't want the bad press, although that is not always the case, believe me. Some might look at the prospect of stopping though and ask, why not drive through the night? And the answer here is not only combining the points I've previously made about driver attentiveness and fatigue, because a tired driver is a careless driver, but it also adds one more thing. It is better for your car. While it's possible to fast charge many 
many times in a day and just keep on keeping on, stopping for an overnight rest allows your EV to charge at a slower rate, get to a higher state of charge and more likely ensure the battery cells in the pack are properly balanced and at a comfortable temperature. And while most EVs can balance their cells without a full charge, stopping overnight allows those cells to get to a nice temperature and allows them to charge at a more gradual rate, which I personally think helps avoid the drift between what the onboard computer thinks the range is versus what it actually is. As for route planning, well, most in-car route planners are notoriously poor and really Tesla's route planning software is the only one I would really listen to. But even then, that can be wrong. So whenever you're doing any kind of long distance trip over a day or more, I'm always going to recommend combining recommendations from multiple different route planners, including a better route planner, your car's onboard navigation, Google or Apple Maps and something like Chargeway. Basically, the more you plan and the more familiar you are with the charging landscape along your route, the less likely it is you're going to end up in a muddle and the more quickly you'll be able to make your trip without going to extremes. So how do I personally road trip? Honestly, it's pretty much the same whether I'm driving the Bolt or the F-150 Lightning. I leave home with a full state of charge and I tried to leave between a 10 to 15% buffer when I get to my first charging stop. It not only means I can deal with sudden inclement weather, which is quite common here on the Pacific coast, but it also means I've got a buffer in case my first charging choice isn't available. I try and stop for bodily reasons at places where I know there's also a charging station and I drive at a normal speed. Sure, it might be more efficient to drive at 55 and give me more range, but on a really long distance trip, it's usually better from a time perspective to drive at a normal speed and then stop more frequently to charge. In the Bolt, charging beyond 70% is a complete and utter pill. In the F-150 Lightning, charging beyond 80% is a complete nutter pill. And I'll choose routes that offer multiple charging redundancies over a particular section. Often I'll choose that over a more direct route, especially one that may be more direct but is more likely to have a broken charging station along the way. It may be my age, but at the end of the day I value trip quality and the few hours more that I will spend on the road is more important to me than getting there first or in the shortest amount of time. But that's me. What about you? Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team and making sure we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, $10.08 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Doug Hofler, Randy Bayer, and John Furworth. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old fashioned PO box you can reach us at address also below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below. This month, we are celebrating the start of spring with an amazing t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator Erin. It's all about growing your own EV charging with solar power. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming right up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you very soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think that 
this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving! <laughs>